Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. I thought my session was like almost uh, in afternoon session. So, so first of all, I'm Dr. Zuraida Zainal, which is from uh, Department of Neuroscience School or Medical Sciences, University of Science Malaysia. And a little bit uh, brief, um, my PhD was in tinnitus and uh, in tinnitus rehabilitations um, using Quranic rhythms and also I'm um, I'm one of the uh, in charge in the balance rehab clinic in UC Science Malaysia, and I have a credentialings in vestibular rehab that awarded by UC Science Malaysia. So, inshallah, this is my first lecture, which is we're going to share in terms of uh, improved balance using the latest Balax model. So, in this lecture, actually, we try to show a lot of case study, which is uh, before and after, and how uh, patients feedback back from our. Um, our patients after they underwent the serials of session. Okay, so before we go, uh, at least when I think you have done a very good and thorough lecture for this, I think I'm on the second day. So for the first day, uh, dizziness is an umbrella. So it's a dendro terms. And the subdivisions of the dizziness, there will be a vertigo, pre-syncope, discic brium, and also there will be uh, others. So in this, actually, this is a very, dizziness is quite complicated. And sometimes it's very hard for patient staff to describe their problem. And also sometimes it's a very hard to diagnose at the end. But I think the, the most important thing is actually when we are dealing and who are you, whether you are physiotherapist, audiologist, or RS specialist, uh, the title is not what we call uh, important. You, you, you can put anything vestibular, a specialist or non-specialist, whatever. But the most important thing is our patients and our clinical understandings on how to give a proper diagnosis, whether this is BPPV, non-BPPV, and proper management. Because you know, when you are taking, we are talking about management, if you give better exercise to BPPV, this is wrong. If, if you give, uh, for example, like for non-BPPV is a maneuver, this is wrong. So this is the most important thing. And the most important that I want to highlight is actually, when a people was diagnosed as a vestibular problem, whether west, a peripheral or central, the most important thing, if they are not BPPV, you should, you should recommend them to do a proper balance exercise and you should try to withdraw the medication slowly, to withdraw the medication slowly. Because I, I, I truly understand that majority of you facing the same problem, which is your patients are, are self prescribed of Mezalon, anti-vomiting, all those things, uh, you know, for, for, for 10 years, for 20 years. The reason why is actually all those medications actually can disturb the progress of the, 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 progress of the uh, vestibular uh, rehabilitation in the future. And also the, another thing is actually psychological. This is a very important. If your patients are having psychological, for example, like anxiety, uh, depressions, and so on, the most important thing is actually you should advise them uh, to see a proper psychiatrist and so on. All right, so this is my first case. This is what we call Margie Bartman syndrome. So Margie Bartman syndrome is, uh, is actually one of the common syndrome where there are complainings of um, complainings of on the board, feeling on the board. And so this is one of the example case study, 64 years old, which is hypertension, gentleman's on oral single oral antihypertension drug, and was referred from, I think, from Kuala Tunggano to USM. And with the main complaint, dizziness and pre syncopal attack. So this is actually one of our main uh, complaint that was informed by our MO when he was referred to me and patient complained. And when I, I go and see patients and patient actually, he's actually aware of the surrounding and able to communicate because he's very panic and very severe episodes of vertigo. So at this point, it's actually this patient is not syncopal attack, which is he's not pain, but he's mute and close her eye and for temporary because he got a very, very spinning sensation. So this is quite interesting because in the beginning, uh, all the neuro teams, they assume this is a stroke cases, which is a pre corporate attack. And there was uh, underwent urgent, I think that was this patient admitted to a private, which is a private uh, a hospital, uh, a private wing, because they want to do urgent MRI and CT scan, everything was normal. And this patient is actually unable um, uh, episodes of three to four times for the past days. It's a recurrent attack of vertigo, actually, a spinning sensation. But because uh, this patient's not really recognized this is vertigo, he is very hard to, to explain. He said spinning, something like that. Diagnosed as a fainting from others. Hospital from the clinic, uh, that they went before. Diagnosed as fainting and pre scope attack. So when I assess, this is a very severe imbalance. Uh, the postural control is very poor. Left hearing loss with tinnitus, 
floating sensation, nausea, vomiting during the same period. So we did uh, the bulk X foam test. In this test, is actually they have a seven a step where the criteria where in the, the, the certain condition five and six is actually when you have to close and standing on the foam. This is bulk X foam test assessment that using a special form and this condition is actually can maintain our balance with your vestibular system. So it's determined that fall on the condition five is very well correlated with the CDP, which is posturography. If you don't have posturography, I think you can have the simple form for you in the clinic to do assessment before and after. And the finding for this patient is actually they are quite bad in this what we call um, the, the, the condition four and five. And this patient also show a positive result on condition two and four and also uh, five and six. And uh, fatty blood test were negative. This hopite test also negative. And, and the most uh, important thing is actually um, Patients are was diagnosed as a minus after they went underwent uh, underwent PTA pure tone altimetry and tympanometry when I was referred to audiology team in PPSK and the before treatment and after treatment we give them oral beta histine which is high dose 48 milligram so my diagnosis now is not uh, what we call pre corporate attack or fainting to this patient so our diagnosis now shifting to the minor disease and uh, after treatment one month alhamdulillah when I under follow up patients complain of 90 percent improvement from floating sensation syndrome and postural control much better and the most the most important thing that make patients very happy is actually no more recurrent pre-syncopal attack that assumed by patient before it's not pre-syncopal attack actually they are vertigo a spinning sensation when i when i try to dip the history again and again so because so that's why i think the history is a very important you you cannot just jump into the conclusions where you see patients with 70s 80 years old you think oh this is a stroke no, you have to dip the, the, the what we call diagnosis or history properly. Okay. And the patient's very happy because he's no more attacks and he's not scared. And he before this, he got always scared. Uh, attacks go to emergency. Scared attacks and go to emergency. So they was referred to SM at uh, that time. Okay. And then okay, so this is our case two. Other chronic cases, which is history of 30 years. 30 years of floating sensation that's referred from Trunganu uh, to Kota Baru. And this case, we diagnose as a, a mild department syndrome. So this is a very important. If you can see here, this is our assessment before. This is assessment of uh, before the therapy. And normally we do before and after uh, four sessions. So this is, okay, this is, you can see. So this is our bulk airform test. So we're counting up to 10. Okay, so this is after. Okay, so this is after four session. Okay, before this, five second four. So this is a very simple test. Okay, see, so 10. So that's mean before this is five, now it's 10. So it's considered normal because we assume 10 is normal. So this is assessment that we did before and after. And this is a feedback from patient because this patient is actually all the way from Kuala Trunganu and he got this problem for almost 30 years. So this is a patient. Empat sesi, empat jam, dua hari.
Okay, so, so this is it. After 30 years, history of floating all the way, MRI done, I think two times. And this is teacher. He's a very, very scared. And he got psychological symptoms, anxiety and phobia. And not even cross the road. He need to depend to her son. So but he's a very lucky. After two days, he tends his banner rehab, four sessions, four hours in our clinic in yeah, USM. Patient's very happy because she able to see the very, very huge difference, which is in terms of solar, able to send and so on. Okay. I just want to move to next. Uh, this is our third case. Uh, so the third case is we diagnose as persistent postural perceptual dizziness, PPPD. So this symptom is actually people are having an imbalance or postural problem when they are standing. Okay, so in terms of more detail on vitigenous disease and steadiness increased by patient on motion exposure to environment uh, with complex moving stimuli, for example, like crowded store, performance tasks require precise visual cues and persistent dizziness and perceived instability was in the upright position and in a busy uh, visual environment. Okay, so in this, according to the Barney Society for the diagnosis of triple PD or we call PPPD, uh, at least one of dizziness and steadiness and non-spinning vertigo present, non-spinning vertigo present for more, uh, for most days for more than three months for more than three months. So it's a symptom prolonged, but very severity and symptom, a persistent symptom occur without specific provocation, okay? And often excavated or worse during upright posture or passive motions and also exposed to moving mucous uh, stimuli or we call that visual vertigo, something like that. And the precipitated by condition that cause acute vestibular symptoms and when patient um, occur an acute or episode uh, condition symptoms settle into the patterns of criteria. So this is all the criteria that we need to be aware in terms of before we diagnose patients have triple PD. So this patient actually all the way from Medan, this patient came uh, to our center for this thing, uh, 77 years old, in balance, 70 go for two years duration. He got history of tinnitus, fullness of ear, floating sensation, difficulty in dark environment, no history on hearing loss and head injury. MRI brain normal and but at foam test, the result of conditions two and four and six was abnormal and only condition one is normal. Condition one, which is standing, eye closed, uh, eye open with um, foot uh, closed. So uh, only that normal. After that, the, the rest is abnormal. <laughs> Okay, and then this patient underwent intensive eight sessions of bulk acts, quick balance, rehabilitation therapy that consists 20 different movements, including eye movement. And we do have a complete uh, session. If you could remember, this is what we call bulk act quick balance. So this bulk act quick balance is our latest uh, innovations that we, we found after eight years. After 10 years, we created bulk act. So this model, this is more intensive, which is because people can recover in a short duration. And the, the, the session was one hour per session in three days. And after three days, patients complain 70% subjective complaint from patient in terms of balance improvement and able to do in a perform routine activities better than before. And in terms of malevolence of vertigo symptom scale, 32% for rehabilitation improve. So this is uh, the questionnaire and some improvement in BAI, BDI, which is a bad anxiety and also a uh, automatic talk questionnaire, which is six and four percent improvement. And but at form shows normal result in condition two to four and better result in condition six. So at least uh, so this is a patient's um, uh, patient's video. So, yeah, so this is patients, uh, patients you call 50% improvement. So I just want to highlight here, if you are saying this is in, term, in terms of PPPD or what we call chronic subjective dizziness. So what happened is actually these patients are uh, occur, dizziness triggered by head injury, migraine, labyrinthitis, and, and some people are uh, 
you know, they are taking SSRI medications for to improve. And, and the things that uh, the thing can provoke is actually anxiety, dissociations, fatigue, and all those things. And they try to avoid from move their head and neck, and they came with the neck pain and stiffness and headache. And, and actually here, I just want to highlight physiotherapies, balance exercise, resting rebuild head is a very, very important. Now, the first thing want to improve the head movement or neck movement and to improve their patient's complaints and in terms of psychological also can be improved if they are underwent a proper rehab by using um, balance rehab. And also psychological therapy using cognitive behavioral therapy also is uh, important actually for, for us to be uh, what we call to introduce to patients with triple PD. So if you can see here, this is what happened. I think, uh, sorry for the slide, I think a bit blur. Initial acute problem, imbalance, developed short-term strategy. So this is what happened. So they, they, they begin to stop using strategy. Uh, for example, like if they have all this problem and they fail the brain to readapt, so this is what we call PPPD. And if they are, uh, and inshallah, they will recover with a proper balance rehab exercise if they introduce to them. And if you can see here, this is a few things that uh, are quite complicated diagram, but I think this is what occurred, what happened in, in terms of maladaptation that occur in this PPPPD. So predisposed factor, uh, dizziness, uh, trigger factor, acute adaptation, and they, they try to read uh, adapt and so on and they try to recover properly with after we do vestibular rehab okay and and this is also another interesting case i want or we want to share is other uh this case is all over from keda uh, so this is also another mal department syndrome which uh persistent of pppd so this patient is actually you can see there is a few cases this is um, a patient with recurrent vestibular pathy. So we have a few uh, feedback patients. So you can see here, this is one of a patient that came to our hospital or center, but, uh, but he fainted before he came. So this is before. Okay, fall. So this patient fall on stage four. I open no problem. Okay, this is after after session, which is he stay here, I think, for three days. Okay, before three seconds. Okay, now ten seconds. In this stage, she's fine. Okay, so this is a patient feedback actually. So patients was in, in, in Bahasa Melayu, I will translate in English actually. This patient, he fainted. One day before he came and see us. So he says plain, in every attack he falls suddenly and he asks for, for help.
Okay. So in conclusion, in this passion, actually, he said before he unable to control her condition. When every time attack came, he will fall from a sitting to fall uh, to lying from standing to sitting all this thing and he's very panicked he's very panicked he cannot control the condition he need to find and he need to call her wife and even at one stage he got like he need to eat while sleeping something like that so the condition was like with an unproper diagnosis he went to a various center and the diagnosis was like gastric and diagnosis was bp blood pressure something like that but at the end when he came we diagnosed them as a recurrent vestibular fatigue and also uh, we give them balance exercise and after three day session we can see the improvement scene and even uh, subjective and also even uh, patients complain all right okay so our Third case is actually the rapid subjective vertigo and psychological improvement post gun repositioning maneuver in three days duration. So this is actually I just want to show you the the, the it's not like improvements in the ball X, but I just want to show you uh, this is quite an interesting case which is a maneuver in three days duration post gun maneuver. So this patient is actually thirty eight uh, years old female that diagnosis diagnosis of dizziness and vertigo for five day duration floating sensation nausea vomiting during the same period uh, no headache no blurry vision no facial numbness and everything was good. This whole part test done, it shows rotary up beating the statements on the right side, but at home test, a positive finding on condition 2, 4, and 6. And this is the questionnaire score, which is uh, we did uh, before the maneuver, uh, after the maneuver, and one month after maneuver. So Alhamdulillah, it's improved. And this patient was like uh, underwent a single apply to be honest, day 6 of the illness, but unfortunately, the symptom will persist and we repeat the treatment of gun cannon repositioning maneuver was carried out in the evening at the same day. But Alhamdulillah, it was improved 90% after the three days. I just want to highlight here that this case, actually, if you do have a posterior cannon BPPV and it's failed with the apply, and you should um, you should think about uh, what we call another option, which is a gun CRM or semen maneuver. Okay, so in this, this is I just want to share with you. This is in terms of apply maneuver is actually affects in reducing patient symptom about forty seven percent. Some author noted wrote sixty three point six percent after one week and increase uh, more increases after two weeks. And in terms of gun CRM maneuver, which are hybrid management, the side line maneuver is the first positions or step in gun CRM via these techniques and also hyper extensions of this uh, apply maneuver can be avoided and heat checking something like that all right so the current issue is actually i just want to highlight here uh, it's not um it's not uh what called only malaysian issues but this is a global issue because if you can see here the dizziness is actually four in one in american 3.3 million but I, I i believe that i think we are not really um established well in children's management of vertigo but i i hope we will be going to move and 2.8 million people each year age 65 and older treated in emergency department because of fall and we are saying about fall this can be caused a lot of fall it can be due to stroke it can be due to what we call imbalance we don't know so that's why uh, and if you can see more narrow or specific which is bpvv is one of the most commonest peripheral vestibular disorder in balance disorder patient so 50 percent percent patients are complaints of poor balance 30 percent people are dizzy having a bbpv 58 percent of patients diagnosed with bbpv are from unknown causes so this i think uh, the, the 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 common or uh, what we call the, the the distribution the percentage of vertigo imbalance pre-syncope free floating vertigo so if you have this uh, range actually the most important thing if they are vertigo you should narrow whether this is bppv or non-bppv bppv maneuver non-bppv balance exercise and imbalance uh, treatment was balance exercise pre-syncope is a blood pressure so you need to address patients to change their position slowly and flow floating sensation this is quite common in what we call mal department syndrome you need to advise them to do also balance exercise and vertigo and other type of dizziness floating sensation and pressing cope okay so the current issue which is misdiagnosed a lot of me diagnosed bppv diagnosis non-bppv non-bppv diagnosed and bppv and also the common uh, uh, the common or the current issues or show the wrong management which is you know when you are giving balance exercise in bppv cases this is not right and then in terms of maneuver if you do badly maneuver for several times it's not done you should shift to another gun crm maneuver or any other semen maneuver then you should try and the most important thing if you are very confirmed this is bppv your symptom or your maneuver is done successfully patient should not depend on any medication after that 
if the patient still persists of dizziness, vertigo, even after the maneuver for two or three times, you should reconsider or revise your diagnosis. Probably this patient or this BPP patient having a mixed diagnosis with other recurrent vestibular pathy, with other vestibular neuritis, or we don't know. All right. And investigation assessment. Stop doing MRI unnecessarily. Stop doing MRI unnecessarily. You know, this is a very common and especially for those who need to be pain on their safe, this is not really good. Lack of skill in this whole test, of course, I want to highlight. I think I know when, when we started the clinic first, it's very scared to do uh, this whole pipe test. You know, one, because this is provoking test. And I understand patient is test not really keen to do when you say, okay, well, we want to create again your vitigo. So patient will not accept that. So you need to give a very good explanation. Uh, you need to explain to your patient, we don't do this, this whole pipe, we cannot uh, treat you properly. You know, if you do do this, this whole part, we cannot rule out BPPV. And sometimes the most important thing I want to highlight here is a symptomatic relief. Uh, tablets injection is a very, very common and popular in our GPs and in our clinic kesihatan and even in our hospital, I think. And some people, even they admit for three days in private hospital, whatever, the only treatment is actually on the tablet, injection, IV mezzalone, and without proposing any balance rehab. That issue. If you think you know, um, if you think a patient needs better rehab, you should send to your physiotherapist. All right, better rehab effective point is to you. So, uh, this patient is actually uh, this is one of a patient, one patient chronic cases four years history. But I, I, I don't want because I think we have a very limited past time. I was have got a one from my assistant. So the the current actually the current issue is actually patients complain balance disorders, uh, floating cases, investigation, and also diagnosis of low blood. Normally, patients with dizziness they will diagnose as low blood pressure, gastritis, tension, headache. That's all. They never they never think about vestibular problem. They never uh, propose of the vertigo. So that's why patients are continuously or become a regular customer in any hospital or any clinic because of their symptoms keep coming and keep recurring. And discharge and follow up and no optimal management given. When I say about optimal, it's actually balance exercise or BPPV maneuver. So this is a very, very important take home message for all those outside. Please in any dizzy patient, in any vertigo patient, this whole pipe is a must and you should treat them properly according to their diagnosis. Management, the problem solution, of course, is very important. I think uh, when you are dealing with BPPV, maneuver is needed. I think my next lecture will be covered about this. Uh, labyrinthine concussion, vestibular rehab, minor disease, low salt diet, Okay, uh, surgery is, um, and I think in Malaysia, I think we are uh, we are still not really uh, exposed to the surgery interventions among vestibular disorder, labyrinthitis, perimetrial fistula, vestibular neuritis, all those things are need vestibular rehab. Even in early stage, of course, we can give them high dose uh, beta uh, steroid and 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 that's all. All right. Okay, in terms of pharmacotropies, uh, uh, helps manage symptoms in the short term, treatment manage symptoms. Uh, this is the vestibular suppression, everything. Yes, you can give for the short term, which is that was one week or two weeks, but you are not allowed to use more than two weeks because the side effects is sedation and extramural uh, reaction. And if you can see here, if you are talking about vestibular rehab, there are uh, vestibular crisis, principal panic. So all those things, fear, you, you really need cognitive behavior therapy and you need physiotherapy in certain uh, overcompensate uh, movement, phobic observation, gait disorder and medication. All right. So the most important thing, I think this is a very, very important slide that you need to understand when you have a vestibular or balance disorder patient, when you do uh, assessment, you need to have these two groups, whether this is BPPV, or non-BPPV. If they are non-BPPV, balance exercise. If they are BPPV, maneuver. This is a very simple, okay? And then um, in terms of acute vestibular loss, there will be two, which is a static deficit or dynamic, uh, whatever. But the most important thing is actually at the end, vestibular rehab is a main goal. And the vestibular conversations, what going to be happen is actually in terms of adaptation, habituation, that lecture will be on my uh, second lecture. I will explain detail. So I think this is also will cover in my uh, lecture. And I just want to highlight here what occur actually in terms of revolutions of our balance uh, in uh, globally. Okay, I know in 18, 1984, uh, thank you to Dr. Cottons and Dr. C, there was created a sheet of protocol, which is you can download easily from Google. Uh, and then after that, there's customized Cotton Cousin from Marissa Paula from London Imperial College, and also a sheet of paper. And you should imagine how can a sheet of 
paper, you know, people can follow this thing. It's very hard because this protocol is actually normally as a guidance for physiotherapists. So every patient need to go regularly to physiotherapy center in order for them to have a, a balanced exercise. But one of, I think, a major problem in our um, uh, in our setup is actually uh, a compliance. People will uh, very hard to come regularly for exercise alone. You know, people have some uh, lots of difficulties. And after that, by Marisa Paula also, Dr. Marisa Paula also 2004, they create simulator-based rehab. So this is a very interesting, you know. So people can do exercise in this uh, simulator. And after that, Alhamdulillah, 2009, Dr. Zureda Zaino with our team, uh, Prof. Dane and also Dr. Romani, uh, created Balax, which is home-based uh, model. And this Balax, which is our first model when we started our Vitigo. And I think 2016, there will be uh, a Mion, Min Yong also create virtual reality. Okay, this is a very enjoyable and then the ballets are which were room uh, also done by Dr. Zureda in 2010 and after that we create ballet stand up 2010 and Alhamdulillah in 2015 we able to offer ballets quick balance. This is the one that I think now we practice. So that's why all the case that I show you, the case one until case two is a but like quick balance. Why I, I say quick? Because patient able to improve within a week with a proper guidance. And then, but like quick balance skeleton tracking also done by our teams, rather at all, 2020. And I think this is the revolution. I just want to make you clear why uh, I think innovation is a something good, which is we are uh, making things more perfect and easier. For from a sheet of paper, we have a model, we have a virtual, we have a disco room, we have a tube tire, okay, and all those things. And now we have the skeleton checking coming soon. All right. So I think this is a disco room that we are saying, and this is a research study, and this is a collaboration across sectional uh, research done among Iran because we do have Tehran, and I think what we very important is actually in terms of rehab. What we try to encourage, what balance exercise do is actually what ballet model do is actually uh, for neural reorganization, adaptation, competition, so all those things. And uh, people will ask, um, how how can you know how long we can improve? One day, two days. So it depends on patient's chronicity. And Alhamdulillah, also uh, now in USM we do have balance rehab clinic at level two trauma building uh, in PT three neuro and take home message. I think for today is actually detailed history and balance assessment. Investigation is a very important. Proper diagnosis, BPPV done the BPPV, and vestibular rehab, you need to educate patients the, 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 the step and the need you know, to, to, to explain to them the importance of the vestibular rehab. And psychological symptom evaluation also is very important. And of course, I think my last word, whoever you are, um, is regardless of the title or whatever, we need to work in team. Don't, don't, don't very busy with uh, arguing who they are, uh, are they, uh, you know, specialists in what. I think it doesn't matter. The most important thing, we are, have our own aim. We want to help people. Don't busy with, uh, you know, unnecessary things. We, we should uh, busy with uh, how we can help people. We can have and solutions or give a solution. So I think a group, a team is a very important. Neurologists, Emergency department is very important because when patients are with vertigo, they will come to emergency first. And I really hope one day all MO, all specialists in emergency able to do this whole pipe. And for me, this whole pipe test and positive proceed with maneuver, you don't need to refer to anywhere. You don't need to refer to ORL or something. But I, I have seen a few cases which they went to ANE four times and it's actually BPPV and it was diagnosed as gastritis because that young lady is actually 19 years old. So you should be there and also physiotherapist is a very, very good and important professional for balance problem actually to be honest. And primary care doctor also very important for, for those in the rural, something like that. And inshallah actually USM we are offer training. You can come to train. If you want to touch with me, you want to learn, it's, it's okay. Come. So thank you so much. I think we are uh, quite late. And thank you so much. I'm, I'm saying, uh, so we're going to have my second lecture and third lecture. Thank you so much.